My name is Jason Samard, and I am the founder of Sims Coaching Systems. I'm here with my co-founder, Joe Moretti, and we're here on the Seven Figure Real Estate Podcast, the podcast you didn't know you even needed. Everyone, get your notepads out. Let's go. We're going to bring you value week over week, and we're actually going to be a lot of fun, and we hope to make you laugh out loud. Subscribe to our channel. Check the content out. If you're looking to take this to a whole nother level, we got you covered. Wow, here we are, dude. You're looking good, Joe. Thanks, buddy. I try. You've been you've been working out. Uh, you know, I got some. I got a, thanks to you, man. You kind of lit a fire under my ass, and uh, yeah, man, I'm I'm in the gym like three days a week, trying to stay active. And again, I've got like a like no no carb Monday that I do. So Zinger's sitting sitting there eating crackers in front of me, and I'm like, sorry, man, crackers. Yeah, we're we're trying to get Zinger on the train, but so it's, far he's resisting. It's a very every, slow moving train. <laughs> every single very unsubtle jab that I've thrown his way, uh, it's yeah. not working with him. But well, it took me months to get you there. Yeah, like what eight months or something? No, it wasn't eight months. It was it was a lot. Anyways, you're looking good. Thanks, pal. I feel uh, good. Ryan Ryan actually had a he had a, a photo of you in the summertime versus now, and what a difference. It was man. a bad angle. I will also say it was a bad angle. Like it was like this weird, like looking up, like frog looking angle. But it's uh, it was a bad angle. But yeah, it, 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 it's definitely evident. So here we are, man. Listen, I got some stuff that uh, I want to get, kind of get off my chest. You know, we talked. I, I confided some stuff with you two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Um, stuff that even I haven't even told these guys and people listening. But uh, you know, was going through. A tough time personally in my marriage, Joe, and I was pretty honest with you about it. And, yeah. uh, you know, you kind of gave me some really good advice. You said, you know what? I think you, you need to do what you do and you need to tackle this head on and have a conversation with your wife about it and, you know, do do everything you can to try and work through it. So I had a conversation with her about 11 days ago and uh, it went amazing. It went really well. And I basically, the biggest thing is, my wife is so task focused. She gets mm -hmm. very like caught up in like, you know, being a mom and all the busy tasks that she forgets that like she's married, you know, and that like I need some attention, connection, all that stuff. And so I literally for seven years, I hate to say this, but kind of felt like a roommate. That's tough. And and in her world, so we, we I kind of shared how I was feeling, how I'd go to bed invisible and things like that. And and you know, that was tough for her to hear, but she was really receptive. She was really listening to what I had to say. And then she kind of shared, like, for me to understand where she was coming from, like, she gets so much anxiety with, like, little kids and, you know, mm -hmm. them getting sick or, you know, planning for the day and making sure everything goes that, like, it was creating anxiety to the point where she couldn't even tell that that was affecting me. And um, we've worked on this every night. So we have our phones set where it basically goes off at 8 o'clock. And we just sit, her and I, and we just talk. And she talks and we connect and, and the intimacy is back and that's been really positive and I actually feel like more than a roommate. And for the last 11 days, Joe, it's been fantastic. Good She's been, you, we've had really like that relationship that I always believed we could have. We actually have had that. That's, that's brilliant. I, I, I love hearing when that happens and you know, like I know Natasha, I think pretty well at this point now. Yeah. I mean, like we're friggin', we've been next door neighbors for like six, seven months. I, I think your wife is such an amazing, kind-hearted, caring, light-hearted individual. And I'm just, I'm super pumped, man. And I think sometimes, you know, there there's an old saying, right? Crises precipitates change. And I think that's so important that if there is that issue that you can get out and you can communicate and get in front of it. Because I think sometimes it's... It's tough, right? You know, especially when you have little kids. Like it's, I'm, I'm past that stage. And to go, if I was to kind of go backwards, man, there's a million things that I, I would have changed. Right. A million things that I would have done differently that I think would have, and I've got an amazing relationship with my wife, but I still think there's things that I could have done to make things easier. And you kind of look back and go, ah. But communication is so key. And I think so many times people hold these feelings in and they don't express them. Like they don't talk about them. And it's like, it's like a wound that just like festers yeah. and gets infected. And then it gets to that point where you got to amputate. There's nothing left to do. Right. Right. So it's, it's sitting down and saying like, is this salvageable? And I was like, man, you've got an amazing relationship and I love that you guys are moving in the right direction because you have a beautiful family. Totally. Thank you. I mean, I'd be, I'd be lost if like I was just over there about a week or so ago and Sophia's running out of the bath looking for Uncle Joe. I'm bringing chicken over and <laughs> I don't know, man. Every time I leave, she's like grabs my hand. She's like, please don't go. I mean, I, I love your kids and you've, you've got such a, a beautiful, beautiful family. So I'm glad you, 
Yeah. Well, thanks for, for modeling a, a healthy relationship with you and Jen. You know, it's really nice to see how well you guys connect. And um, I've had that for the last 11 days. It's been really nice. You know, the communication's been strong. The connection's been strong. Intimacy has been really good. And um, you I'm grateful. Wink, you, just, you just winked at me. Did I wink at you? Yeah, you kind of gave me like a... Did I give you a wink? Yeah. Wow. All right, man. I, I love it. I didn't mean to wink at you. Well, you did, but you said oh. the word intimacy and well, wink. So to me, go. that means, you know what? You're you're where you should be, so... Things are good, man. So th- thank you for being uh, just a good sounding board for me. You know, you, you're you more than just a really good friend. You're like a brother and somebody that I can just confide and talk to about stuff and work through things that are going through my in my life. And um, yeah, I appreciate you, man. Hey, man. Appreciate you. you. I'm, almost, I'm almost tearing up. Like, that's... Thank you. Uh, you know, we go through real stuff. So, Bellas, if if you have something on your mind, have the confidence to talk to your partner about it. Literally. It may not be something she wants to hear in the moment, but it's a gift you're giving her. And if she can take that information away and process it, and you can understand where she's coming from, you can really improve things. Because you don't have to go to bed lonely for seven years. You don't have to feel invisible. Like, if you communicate through it, and this is kind of what I've learned through this process, is I just need to sp- speak what I'm Mm -hmm. feeling versus putting it off, not talking about it or, you know, relationships aren't easy, but communication, you can get through anything. And I think at the end of the day, you're never going to be with somebody that a hundred percent of them Mm -hmm. is exactly how you are. I mean, if you can find somebody that you can put up with 85% of them and there's 15% (laughs) that you can work with, that's probably a good person. And at the end of the day, communication is everything. So love it. Let's, uh, let's segue off of this stuff. Let's talk about, Business. Let's talk about wait how you sec, can wait improve. A sec. Whoa, 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 whoa! What? Pump what? the brakes, man. I myself had something to add. Oh yeah, I, I didn't even to... ask you. So, like, look at me. Normally, you're the one sharing a story, and here I am no. trying to share a story. And now that I'm trying to butt in, it was it was a good. Yeah, but it's not that good of a story. It's whatever. So this weekend, man, I I I, I kind of had like, I guess, an awakening of sorts. Motorcycles for me have been a passion for over ten years now, and I started. I went down the the, the YouTube like wormhole. And I'll tell you, man, I'm inspired. I'm going to go away for a while. Well, you got kids <laughs> and you have businesses to run. So, yeah, I think uh, I'm going to like peace out for a little bit. And uh, I'm going to take my laptop, take everything I need. I'm going on a spirit quest, man. I'm getting on my bike. I will not look back, but I'm going to have an adventure for the ages, man and machine. I'm going to go to Prince Edward Island. You're going to I'm, ride across the country? I'm going to ride across the country. Me, myself, and I, along with my 2017 Dyna. Hey, Lower wait a minute. Dress. You can't do something <laughs> like that without me butting in on this. Come on. Did it's you, not an adventure without having somebody to share it with. Did, did, you, just, did you just crash my soul I, spirit quest? A hundred percent in crashing this thing. If you're doing a spirit quest like that, I'm coming. So this is like, of, like there's no hotels. Like this, there's no hotels. You realize this, right? Joe, you've never camped before. You don't know how to put up a tent. Okay. Do you know how to put up a tent? Uh, we could figure it out. YouTube. Well, so all of a sudden you're invited. <laughs> Seriously. So, yeah. There may have to be some hotels. I don't know, man. There's like, going to be some hotels. I want to do like the whole thing. Like I want to cook a coffee like on a... Sure. Okay. I want to cook my coffee on like a, a okay, campfire first off, thing. I got a couple things to say here. The fact that I just said cook coffee? Yeah. <laughs> first off, you don't cook coffee. Number two, Joe's that guy that won't camp. No. His no, wife goes camping, camping every summer mm-hmm. and Joe's like, nope, not going. Not me. Now all of a sudden, Joe sees himself, you know, by a river somewhere in Saskatchewan. Yeah. Making yeah. coffee in the wilderness. I'll be at Ryan Bender's house. Come on, <laughs> in his backyard. You're hilarious. You... So we have we have coaching students. We've got affiliate partners. We have so many people across Canada. So I figure, worst case, there's got to be somebody's house, like Casey Bonnet in Edmonton. We can stay with like this. Sounds like the Riley two Nichols years ago. in Calgary. But seriously, man, I'm go- I'm going to do. It. I I went on a spirit quest once on my bike, and it was like the greatest thing ever. It was three days. But I'm telling you, I just, I feel like I just need to create that memory, that lasting memory. And I think it would be the most brilliant thing is to just go on the open road and what's that? How are we going to do Zoom calls? How yeah. We, how are you going to do Zoom calls? Campsites have Wi-Fi, man. If I organize all my Campsites Zoom calls, have Wi-Fi. I'll have all my Zoom oh, calls. Man. If I collapse the camp by 9 a.m. So I get up at eight, I'll cook my coffee and some toast or something on some fire. I'll make some fires, and then I can get up. I can do all my Zoom calls from a picnic table. You know what? Joe's officially lost it. 
he's completely lost his marbles. No, this no. Is, this sounds like two years ago when you told me you were going to be a, a kickboxer. Remember hey, that? You were going to do messed. a professional kickboxing fight? I tried. Hey, I, I, freaking tra- <laughs> I dropped a ton of weight. I trained for it. The and guy then, was going to be. Do you remember that page? He was going to be. A, yeah, yeah, doing I did. professional kickboxing fights, and I, I tried had, to remind him. I had him. an injury. I had an injury. <laughs> I messed my wrist. up. You had a head injury before you had this idea. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, anyways, you, you saw me in action once. You're outside of hilarious. A Dairy Queen. But if you're doing a Spirit Quest across the country, I want to be part of it. I just think it would be amazing, and I think it's a great showcase that you can do what we do anywhere. If you've built that leverage, and I think it'd be a great demonstration. We got to document of part of it. We'll document the whole damn thing. You got kidding it. me? And and if you have somebody to share the stories with, it's so much yeah. better, right? Like we can share the stories and we're a part of oh, it. Oh man, it'll be Joe's version and my version. Do you know? Do you know oh, the shenanigans we'd get into in like you know Rivers, Manitoba on like Harley's in the middle of J- like July? Yeah. Like, do you know? Uh, but the only thing is, we we can't go through Quebec. You've got to cut down and go up. You can't go through Quebec. Why is that? Because. Um, a lot of cities actually aren't allowed motorcycles in the city. That's like ridiculous. There's, I'm from, I'm telling, I, I've been to Quebec. Not I know, from I know there, but have. my family's from Quebec. I, I know. So a lot of people I'm going to send you the video. But most people, when they're riding across Canada, actually go through the States. They cut, they cut out Quebec. Uh, we got we got to go through Quebec, man. It's, I, want, I want to show you my freaking heritage. If I'm part of this trip, right. you got to see my freaking heritage, bro. You'll love it. I love how this has now turned into your I know. spirit quest. I just totally butted on your spirit quest. <laughs> Listen, you can uninvite me and do it by yourself, no, but you know no, it'll be no, more man. fun if you You got... know, I, I, I'd go anywhere with you, man. You know that by now. And I think you and I, whenever we get together, magic happens. We got to just sit the wives down and be like, look, ladies, sorry, but we're going to be gone for two weeks and we're not looking back. Not looking back. And that's the thing is you ride there, take your time. Like you only ride maybe five, six hours a day and you do like hikes and explore and do all the, like, the weird touristy stuff. Like see the world's largest tulip in Alberta. Like you just do the weird yeah, stuff. Yeah. And then you only ride for like five hours a day. That's like our road trip we did a f- two years ago. Exactly. That was like so that. fun. Right? So fun. Paige, wasn't that so fun? That was like that was awesome. literally one of the coolest memories that I have in the last long time. But like so many cool places that we stopped at that I'd never thought of. Like that, the largest suspension bridge oh, in the man. world. That page like made it like part way on and then turned around. You could have done that? it, Paige. You could have. You, you totally could have done, done it. You could have done it. Totally could have done it. Anyways, that was so cool. Gold. Who would have thought Golden BC of all places had yeah. these cool things? The Golden Years Bridge, I think it was called or something. Yeah, wasn't it? So, and then we stopped at Lake Louise. Yeah, that was like beautiful. Like literally looked like a postcard that oh, we were man. a part of for the we, time. We, we saw the last spike on the on the the, the, the railroad CP rail when so they drilled the last spike. Yeah, all sorts of cool stuff. Yeah, like, it it's neat. just. Yeah, when the boardwalk through the forest on our way back. Yep, Sycamus, BC. I don't know why, but Sycamus (laughs) stands out to me. Trying to find a hotel in like Kelowna in the summertime without reservations. Oh man, so many good jokes. Anyways, that was a lot of fun. So hey, listen, let's 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 segue into business, okay? Because people are listening because they want to learn how to level up in their business. Are they? Yeah. Well, (laughs) mom, dad, thanks for tuning in. Um, So look... Business. Let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the thing that everybody is struggling with right now, which is time management. Ooh, that's a good one. Man, I have so many conversations. People are like, oh, like I didn't get my measurables done or I didn't get that done. Mm-hmm. Well, in the realm of all that's possible, could you have done it? You know, of course. typical coaching conversation. But here's the thing. Work in, in 30 minute blocks. That's it, right? Really simply, 30 minute chunks. Right now we're recording a podcast and we literally blocked out 30 minutes to do it. So we're going to work in that 30 minute block. Nothing else is happening right now other than this. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get some calls done, block 30 minutes. That's all you do. You want to get a bunch of text messages done, block 30 minutes. And that's all you do. It's really that simple. Leave some flexibility in your calendar. I think this is another thing. People like block up their whole ideal day, but they leave no flexibility Mm -hmm. in the calendar. So I always say do all your heavy lifting before noon. Get it done before noon, right? So Build your prospecting time in. Have a, a free window where you can do your client research, do your reach backs, all that stuff. Afternoon, leave it open for appointments. That way, if you've scheduled some stuff or if you need to, you can go and deal with it. Here's the art of managing your time, though, is understand that you don't just drop whatever you're doing to pick up something else. Just because mm-hmm. you bring me an offer and it's 9 o'clock doesn't mean I'm dealing with it at 9 o'clock. Simple tip, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know what, Joe, I've received your offer. I'm meeting my clients at 1130 and I'll get back to you with a response this afternoon. Love it. Really simple. 
right? So, and what I then can do is I can park it mentally. I can park it because I know I'm dealing with it at a specific time. And then I go back to my activity that I had planned. If it's Sunday and you receive an offer, guys, why are you dropping your entire Sunday? Mm -hmm. Here's a tip. This is what I used to do. Once I learned this, it changed my life. I'd say, hey, Joe, I received your offer. Thank you so much for the offer. Listen, I know you only left it open till 10 o'clock tonight, but it's Sunday. My sellers are out of town doing some family stuff. They're not going to be able to deal with it today, but I have time booked in tomorrow morning at 1130 to meet with them. So if you could do me a favor, go back to your clients and just ask them to extend it to five o'clock tomorrow. I'll have a response in the afternoon for you. Can you do that for me? Love it. How many of you are not doing that? Why wouldn't you do that? It's so simple. Free up your Sunday. It's great for the other agent because now they can move on with their Sunday too. Because the worst thing is, is when you submit an offer and then you're waiting and you're waiting and you don't get any response back. So you're kind of like hesitant to get too involved in your weekend because, well, what if I get this response back? But by me calling you and saying, hey, listen, I received your offer. Can you do me a favor though? I can't deal with it till this time tomorrow because my sellers are out doing stuff. That's reasonable. And any reasonable realtor is going to be like, okay, no problem. Let me talk to my clients. Yeah, yeah, no problem. We'll leave it open until five o'clock. Get them to send the amendment in, mm -hmm. right? That's it. Manage your time, guys. It's it's so easy. Then your wife, you can look over at her and just say, don't worry, baby. We can still have a full Sunday because mm -hmm. I know how to manage my schedule. You know, it's, that's so interesting. I, I look at it from a different lens. And I know you, you, you love talking about time management and so do I, but I actually never say the words time management because you... To me, you, you cannot manage time. Time's like the tides. You can try to manage the tides. Where's it going to get you? But what it's about, it's about managing your priorities within a given time. And I think that's where a lot of people get confused. They go, well, I, I got to be better at managing my time. Well, no, it's not. You need to work on accountability and organizing priorities. Right. Because I think that sometimes people, their priorities are just so off. Right? We talk a lot about compounding. Right, you might go review that offer, whereas I'm going to sit here and make calls. What's going to happen at the end of the day? I don't know what's going to happen. What could happen is you, you know, that that offer that you're reviewing, I'm still going to review it, but I'm going to go have six or seven more proactive conversations. So guess what? In the long run, you do that every single day. How many more offers am I going to be writing and reviewing in the long term? Yeah, it's yeah. going to compound and it's going to stack, but that comes from managing that priority. Treating each priority as its unique and individual time slot versus letting things bleed. It's about being focused. Mm. Now, I love the def I, I love a good acronym, right? BAM FAM, book a meeting from a meeting. SCUBA, self contained underwater breathing apparatus. Focus, fuck off because you suck. And that's what everybody needs when you're looking at those priorities is complete focus. Let everything else, sorry for saying this, let everything else just fuck off and burn. You could, I think human nature is, uh, humans are horrible multitaskers. Terrible. You need to look at one thing, one thing, period. So I think that piece you added in about those 30 minute bursts is absolutely brilliant. That will add focus, it'll add direction, and it'll allow for that compounding effect in your business going forward. So really happy you brought that up. Yeah, I love it. Um, another thing that I think many of you would benefit from is understanding that being really smart can make you really stupid. <laughs> Let me explain, okay? An engineer is paid a lot of money to analyze, scrutinize, and basically talk themselves out of doing things after a, a long period of analysis. Now, if you think about that, an engineer is probably not going to do super well in theory in real estate if they bring that same analysis paralysis to what we do. Somebody like myself, a C student at best, not that I was dumb, just school wasn't really my thing. I did enough to, to get by. I realized that if I just take massive levels of action and not sit there and overthink, good mm -hmm. things will happen. And it's amazing. The more I take action, the more good things continue to happen. I never sit there and try and make the perfect plan. I make a plan and then I get obsessed with the execution of the plan, not trying to make the plan perfect in every way and trying to like figure out every variable because one thing I know in business is you learn more by doing than you do by like mm -hmm. sitting back and thinking and processing and analyzing. So if you're in real estate right now and you're wondering why your business may, might not be taking off the way you want it to, 
likely is you're suffering from analysis paralysis. Maybe you're really smart and you're overcomplicating this whole thing, trying to make it this big thing. It's really not. At the end of the day, if you can speak to people, bring value by asking great open-ended questions to uncover needs and be proactive and do more touches in a day than most of your competitors, over time, it's a winning formula for success. It's that simple. I agree. You know, smart isn't what you know. Smart's what you do. Get out there and do. How many teachers are brokies? Wages. Wages, brokies. I hate to say it, right? Teachers are brilliant people. I have so much respect for teachers. But man, could you imagine if they took the knowledge that they had and they applied it into tangible things in life? Imagine the teacher that teaches at the Harvard School of Business. But if they've never run a business themselves, how sad that is. They're teaching people how to run businesses and how to make money, but yet they're sitting on the information and that's the end of it. Now, maybe they have a passion for teaching and all the respect to them in the world. The point that I'm trying to make, though, is that not it's not that teachers aren't smart or capable. It's teachers give knowledge they don't actually apply. Mm -hmm. And so don't be a teacher. Be the person that takes action and applies the things that you learn. Be a student of the sport. Yeah. Right? And I think it's so funny. I, it, uh, so many people don't realize that perfection is the enemy of good enough. Be good enough that you can go and just structure 10 conversations per day. Right. Be good enough that you can send five text messages to your sphere each day. Like that's all you need to do. Yeah, it's amazing. And and with discipline, the mm -hmm. compound effect over time is crazy. I was just on with some coaching students this morning. When I started with them like a month ago, these guys were just all over the place, so disorganized. So we've been working on getting them organized and they're a lot better than they were. And the biggest thing that I keep harping on them is get your daily measurables done which is for them like we made it really simple i think it's like five conversations a day but i've been keeping them accountable for the last 30 days and guess what they just picked up two new listings that had they not done those proactive mm -hmm. touches and thought oh geez i should make that call or i should follow up that person they wouldn't have had that business they have a pipeline of other opportunities now that they're working because they've been taking action and it's there's no there's no shortcut mm -hmm. there's no secret formula the reason why my students continue to kick butt is because they're taking massive levels of action. They have consistent lead sources that they've got going in their businesses and they're working their skills. We're working their skills right now. And it's the best thing that you can do during a, a recession, a market shift is become the most skilled agent in your marketplace and become the most disciplined on the things you mm -hmm. can control, which is your output and your activities. What are we doing on the coaching side? Output activities with discipline and consistency. And it compounds, and over time, it's unbelievable the impact it can make in somebody's life. But you literally can't just snap your fingers and become wealthy. Quick wealth comes with very, very hard problems, right? Mm -hmm. Understand when you get things really quickly in life, it comes with other problems. For example, you know, a beautiful girl who goes and sets up an OnlyFans page. Sure, in the moment, she might make a whole bunch of money. But 10 years, 20 years later, when she has a family or is trying to get a family and maybe she's finding it hard for somebody to take her seriously for marriage or maybe, um, you know, her kids f discover that she had some, some stuff online that creates a, a weird scenario, probably not the best thing for her long term, right? In the short term, though, she got some quick wins. The kid that the 20 year old that got lucky in a crypto pump and made a bunch of money on crypto and all of a sudden now has more money than they've ever fathomed and it was literally pure luck. And now all of a sudden they have they, they lose it because crypto's corrected and they don't actually have any tangible skills and they don't even know how to like navigate life. Short short term wins, long term problems. I'd rather see somebody have some life experience where they have to go and get the school of hard knocks and like just grind and figure it out over time and build their wealth up through experiences because they're the people that are more likely to appreciate it and be able to hang on to it. No, I agree. There you go. So short term wins comes with long term problems. Sometimes it's better to just be disciplined and understand the process is going to take time. You will get there if you just don't quit. There's the message for today. Love it. All right, Brody. Spirit Quest 2023. Spirit Quest, 2023. We're all about experiences, so I'm I'm down, man. I've invited myself, but I mean it. <laughs> I want to be there. Let's do it. <laughs>